الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده له الحمد في الأولى وله الحمد في الآخرة له الحمد من قبل وله الحمد من بعد وله الحمد على كل حال وقل الحمد لله سيريكم آياته وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة الكبير المتعال وهو القاهر فوق عباده وأشهد أن سيدنا والحبيب فينا والعزيز علينا محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وما أرسلناك إلا بشيرا ونذيرا للناس كافة من يطع الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا مضل له ومن يعص الله ورسوله وأولي الأمر من المؤمنين فلا هادي له أما بعد committed brothers and sisters living the details and watching developments and being concerned the affairs of the Muslims as we are instructed to be by Allah's Prophet's hadith من أصبح ولم يهتم بأمور المسلمين فليس منهم or فليس بمسلم begins his day and is not concerned with the affairs of the Muslims is not one of them or is not a Muslim living the implications of this 
or these instructions from Allah's Prophet may Allah's peace and grace be His the Muslims contrary to the facts and to whom we are are the subjects of a campaign that seeks to dehumanize us and to demonize us. We are presented on a consistent basis without no end in sight and without seeming possibility of understanding the facts as they are, especially as those facts pertain to the Muslims of today's real life. They paint us with a broad brush, saying in so many words, but Muslims are terror prone, supporters of terrorism. Muslims are willing to wreck human society, to destroy civilization and to obstruct the course of human progress. And all of this is meant to feed into a policy, a grand policy in the world that doesn't want to see Muslims enjoy their God-given rights, and to live their God-given scripture. This is what is said from those whose intentions are vile when it comes to we, the Muslims in the world. And we know who we are. We don't need anyone to tell us who we are. We know very well who we are. We know this fact better than anyone else. We don't need them to describe to the public who we are. Allah says, and we challenge these same people who are bad-mouthing the Muslims. Allah says, describing who we are, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا We have, Allah says, we have dignified we have honored the descendants of Adam. It's an article. It's an element of our faith and our commitment to Allah that we view all the descendants of Adam with respect and with dignity and with honor by virtue of the words that nourish our soul and expand our thoughts 
these people who are bad-mouthing the Muslims, do they have the equivalent of these ayat? We ask. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have indeed honored the descendants of Adam. وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ and we have carried them through lands and through seas. وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ And we have provided them with the luscious sustenance of life. وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا And we have placed them in a position of preference and in a status of priority superseding most of everything else of whom we have created. How can Muslims who live by these words look at Allah's creation with a vision of respect. How can they be reduced just because of some policies that purport to be to the benefit of mankind? These policies that at the same time want to dishonor Muslims, Islam, and anything pertinent to Muslims and to Islam. Isn't it Allah? Jallat Hikmatu who says to us, and we in this respect also challenge those who are painting us us with this broad brush of accusations and innuendo and character assassinations. Do you have the equivalent of these words that we are reciting as a matter of conviction, as a matter of duty, as a matter of who we are in this life and in this world? يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم. What does Allah's words of inspiration say in our minds and in our hearts? They say, O oh people, we have created you from a male and a female, and we have rendered you into corresponding people and strains of human society. For what reason? So that you may come to acknowledge that the best of you in the sight of Allah are those who are most in taking precautions and procedures to protect from Allah's wrath. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnakum min dhakar wa untha وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلًا لِتَعَارَفُوا There has to be an ongoing institutionalized process of knowing each other. These are instructions that reverberate between a Muslim mind and a Muslim heart. لِتَعَارَفُوا إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most
most dignified of you in the sight of Allah are those who take precautions not to incur Allah's retribution. And this is done not as individuals. We are instructed by Allah to do this in mass. In a mutual manner. لِتَعَارَفُوا This is the way we perceive of a divine humanity, a divine society of human beings on earth. Divine in as far as it is instructed by scripture. It is enlightened by Allah. It is taught by human experience. And it learns from its mistakes. We devote our lives to Allah saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All of us say this numerous times, uncountable times. Every time you read Al-Fatiha, you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You thank and you praise Allah, the sustainer of the peoples and the worlds. We don't say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Arab. We don't say Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Sunnah or Rabbi Shia or Rabbi this and Rabbi that. All of us, whatever peculiarities we may have on the side, we all acknowledge that our sustainer is the sustainer of all. Unlike those who monopolize God or make God as if he belongs to a particular group of people. With this universal, inclusive, open-armed approach to the rest of the peoples in this world, with all of this we are accused. with all the force of the established order around that we are against the others. We, they tell us as if they want to skip all of these details. They tell us we are the terrorists. If you want to define to us who a Muslim is as opposed to who a terrorist is, or in the words of the president of this country yesterday, he wants to say that some people are not martyrs, they are murderers. And he goes on and he instructs his subordinates in that part of the world, the rulers, the dictators in Muslim lands, instructs them and their media not to refer in positive terms to those who are fighting and dying and sacrificing themselves for Allah's words. لِتَكُونَ كَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلْيَا وَكَلِمَةُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا هِيَ السُّفْلَى So that Allah's words reign supreme. And the words of those who deny Allah, who are opposed to Allah, remain in its inferior position. come and they want to define to us who we are. 
If you're telling us who we are, where are your citations? Where's your proof? We want to live by the words and the meanings that come to us from our common maker and creator. If you want to label us or to accuse us, then you have to do so on the basis of the reference within which we live, and that is Allah and His Prophet. Outside of that, your words have no value. Whether it is you personally, or the rest, you function in your image. What is Allah? In addition to these ayat, what does he say? لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقصطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصطين إنما ينهاكم عن الذين أخرجوكم من دياركم إنما ينهاكم عن الذين قاتلوكم في الدين وأخرجوكم من دياركم وظاهروا على إخراجكم أن تولوهم ومن يتولهم منكم فأولئك هم الظالمون This cosmopolitan understanding of Islam of Allah's words. Allah knew that there are going to be those who are going to interfere in this process. And we see this is a fact of life. There are real forces in this world that want to interfere with the Muslims doing their duties. Look, this is a relationship between Muslims and Allah. And we are trying to redefine our lives so that Allah Azza wa Jal is satisfied. And why are they, why are they interfering in, into our internal affairs? Why do they place not only the words of their mouths, but the bullets and the instruments of mass destructions in our lives? Allah is saying to us concerning this larger human presence around us who are not in the technical sense Muslims, they may be Christians, may be Jews, may be of other creeds and other beliefs. He says, لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُقْصِطُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْصِطِينَ Allah does not bar you from those who have not shown hostility and fought you because of your deed and did not displace you and expel you from your lands. If these others who are not Muslims in this world are not fighting us because of our deen and are not forcing us out of our lands. Allah does not bar us from showing virtue to them and being fair to them. Because Allah shows an admiration for those who are fair. You see, we are instructed by Allah to be fair to those who are not fighting us because of our deen and who are not misplacing, who are not expelling and forcing us out of our own territories. To these types, we are instructed and ordered by Allah to be fair to them and to show them standards and behaviors of virtue. 
Uh, but these people care to read the words that circulate in our hearts and minds together. These words of Allah that define who we are. For those who need to listen to this ayah, we repeat it again. Uh, but the ayah doesn't end here. There's more to it than just that. Because the larger human society around is not going to be characterized by a peaceful relationship with Muslims. If it were, they would see all character and behavior and deportment of good and morality and virtue coming their way. But what if they turn hostile? And they do war against us. What happens then? Do we remain to be virtuous towards them in the sense that we want them to get away with their wars and battles and warfare and bloody policies against us? No. Because the ayah, Allah's words go on to say, factoring in the hostile forces around us. إِنَّمَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهِ عَنِ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَأَخْرَجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ وَظَاهَرُوا عَلَى إِخْرَاجِكُمْ أَنْ تَوَلَّوْهُمْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنْكُمْ فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ but Allah bars you, Allah prohibits you concerning those who are fighting you and doing war against you because of your deed. What is your deed? Why are they fighting against you? Have they ever fought against Muslims because Muslims want to pray? and seclude themselves five times a day in a masjid? Can anyone cite for us one war in history against Muslims because they wanted to pray in a masjid? It doesn't exist. Did they launch war against Muslims because Muslims want to fast or pay their zakah? Can anyone remind us of one war in all the history of Islam, which is the history of mankind? The continuous human struggle to acquiesce and conform to Allah. Has there been any wars because of any rituals? No. Because deen is more than rituals. is the involvement of your will in human affairs. When you step out of your rituals with the will that, are mold, that is molded by these rituals, then you're going to encounter opposition. People, segments of humanity will show it's dislike for whom you are. That is why Allah is saying, and He created all of this span of human existence throughout the different times, past, present, and future. And He knows how people are going to interact, react, or proact to this will of human beings who want to be Allah's. إِنَّمَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ Allah bars you. 
Allah inhibits you from those who are active in their war against you and from those who have expelled you from your lands, your homes, and your territories. And they were also in position supportive of this process. The process of fighting you because of your Islamic deen and expelling you because of your geographical location. There are adjuncts to this process. You can see this today. There's a war. It's only people who are running away from life and from reality who can't see that there is a war. There's a military war. There's a propaganda war. There's a psychological war. There's an economic war. There's a social war. And all of these war fronts are lively and acting up against those who are committed to Allah. And what do you do? You show them that you are a peaceful person who is willing to sacrifice Allah's deen to satisfy Allah's enemies is that what is required of those who are committed to Allah part of this is demonstrated to you as we are here in the street إنما ينهاكم الله عن الذين قاتلوكم في الدين وأخرجوكم من دياركم وظاهروا على إخراجكم أن تولوهم الله inhibits and bars you from having them becoming any type of authority in your life becoming any of your allies in this sphere of activity. Allah is not speaking about salah and zakah and siyam here. He is speaking about the implementation of the meanings of salah and siyam and zakah in the social order around us. This extra effort is what stimulates the type of warfare that comes our way. So Allah inhibits us from becoming their allies or from having them become authorities in our lives. How do these meanings fit into today's world? You see, that there are Muslims in the Holy Land who are not interfering with the way Jews and Christians want to perform their religious services. Have Muslims ever had any difficulties with the way Jews and Christians want to perform their prayers or their religious services? Absolutely not. So this is not an issue of religion per se. This is not an issue of how people want to express their devotion to the definition of the God that they have. It's not about that. The issue is about the way Muslims want to determine their future for themselves. And because Muslims are beginning to make that choice very clear. They want their future to be an Islamic future. And all of a sudden, you have a war against terrorism. If Muslims chose to have their future a secular future, or a non-Islamic future, or 
a kafir future or a munafiq future, we wouldn't have had all of this. All of this proves that the Muslims are on the right course. This demonstrates to us, for those of us who need this illustration, it demonstrates to us that we are finally on the right path. And so Allah says, those who are showing this type of opposition that goes all the way to killing us, in the Holy Land. Look, this is supposed to be holy territory. Bethlehem, the church of the nativity, where Christians believe that Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Mary, was born, is besieged by those who say that they are in a war against terrorism. And who's inside this church? There are Muslims and there are Christians. But the war, this self-generating war, not from particularly from religious quarters, this war wasn't fought out in churches and synagogues, even though they contribute to this war. Where was it thought out? It was thought out in what is called defense ministries, more aptly war ministries, departments of war, foreign ministries, departments of interference in, in the internal affairs of other people, and in this case of Muslim peoples. They want to interfere in the internal affairs of the Muslims, and here they are surrounding the church of the nativity with Muslims and Christians. It is reported that there's about 60 Christian clergymen out of between 250 and 300 individuals inside that church. Now you would think if there was a Christian religious backbone in this world, they would come out and object to this military campaign in and around the area in which the Prince of Peace was born. But where? Where do we find these type of people? They have been sold in the market of political slavery in the world. If Isa, if Jesus was going to return now, at this time to this world, you'd think he'd be on the side of the Israeli-American Saudi axis of evil. They accuse Muslims. This is their big accusation nowadays. That Muslims are an axis of evil. They they change, they turn the facts upside down. With all of their militaries and all of the destruction and death that they are dropping on us in our lands because of our deed and forcing us out of our homes because of whom we are. They want to tell us we are the terrorists. It is so obvious who is the real terrorist in this world. But no, they want to stick that accusation to the small guy. To people who are defending their families. A curfew now in the Holy Land. The Israeli Zionist killing machine in Tel Aviv has clamped down a 24-hour curfew on the Holy Land and brought in their tanks. They have American-made Apache and F-16 instruments of war in the air. And then the little per people on the ground who are hiding and there's no place to hide. 
who are now sharing the crumbs that they have left. There's no longer much food to find, to eat, to sustain life. And these types now are terrorists. And we don't have people of integrity, whether they come from religious or political contexts, who can come out and say the true terrorist in all of this affair is Ariel Sharon, the prime minister of the Israeli killing machine. That is the number one terrorist in the world. And then Muslims around the world, they want to express their solidarity. That's all they want to do. They want to go out after Jumu'ah prayers today and last week. Muslims left some masajid in different capitals of Muslim lands. And then all of a sudden, there were what is called anti-riot forces or police, anti-riot security forces, they had many names for them, waiting right there for the Muslims. You cannot proceed to go and stand in front of the Israeli or the American embassies to protest their war against us in our own bedrooms, in our own homes. Can't do that. You see, that is why Allah, before all of this happened, He knew the nature of this conflict. That's why He said, إِنَّمَا يَنْهَاكُمْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَأَخْرَجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ وَظَاهَرُوا عَلَى إِخْرَاجِكُمْ أَنْ تَوَلَّوْهُمْ That's the problem right there. Allah has restricted and inhibited us from having this alliance with these forces, with these contrarian forces, with these hostile forces that are doing all of this to us. But they have. We have. We have people from among us who have gone and placed these well-defined enemies as their authorities and their allies. You would think the first expression of solidarity with the targeted and victimized Muslims in the Holy Land would come from Mecca and al Medina. You would think that's where it would come from. It's prohibited. The Muslims in Mecca and in al Medina cannot express their solidarity and their brotherhood with the other Muslims in the holy and occupied lands of Palestine. It's not possible. Today, after Jumu'ah prayers, there were, according to some reports, thousands. According to other reports, tens of thousands of Muslims who wanted to express their opposition to U.S. support for Israel in al Zahran, a city on the eastern part of the Arabian Peninsula in what is called Saudi Arabia. And there they were, the forces, the people who pray five times a day. The people who have, because of the many sajdas that they make, they have marks on their forehead. And because of the extra fasting that they do, they fasted their stomach to a virtual ulcer. The ritualistically religious Muslims who are standing in front of the rest of the Muslim people telling them you cannot express your brotherhood your feelings, your solidarity with your brethren and your extension in the holy lands around Al-Quds, Jerusalem. These are Muslims. These are followers of Allah's Prophet. Do they read these words in the Quran? Do they know what they are doing? And this is only one sample of what is happening throughout Muslim lands. 
Same thing as has happened in Cairo, in Amman, in Istanbul, in Mauritania, in other places of the Muslim world. Why? Because they have violated these authorities and these powers that are the extension of the will in the White House. Even though they pray and they fast and they do all of these rituals, they have violated the frank words of Allah in His clear book. إِنَّمَا يَنْهَاكُمْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَأَخْرَجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ وَظَابِكُمْ And whoever becomes an ally and accepts the authority of these warriors against the Muslims, these enemies of Allah, then they are thalims. They are oppressors. They are unjust. They are violators of the code of fairness by which human society works and functions. Can you come out and you say, can any Muslim come out and say that there is not a combination of forces at work? There are. And we have to visualize them through the words of Allah and through the precedence of Allah's Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعوه سبحانه وأنتم على يقين بالإجابة وتوبوا إلى الله إن الله تواب رحيم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب بجميع المحامد على جميع النعم وصلى الله وسلم على المبعوث خيرا ورحمة وهدى لكافة الأمم محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Sisters and brothers, committed Muslims. With all of the information that is available to you concerning the declared and undeclared assaults, and attacks that we, the Muslims of the world, are experiencing nowadays. We echo the suggestion coming from the Jumu'ah prayer in Tehran today that tells these producers of petroleum in Muslim countries to turn off the spigot for one month. Stop selling any of this petroleum for one month to the United States and those who are supporting this Israeli war and aggression against innocent people in the Holy Land. You will see in the coming weeks and in the coming months how these kings 
and presidents that have the petroleum exporting capabilities. You will see how they will continue to do business as usual. They tell us this information comes from our enemies and it also comes from our friends. It comes from insiders and it comes from those who bid us evil. That the kings and the presidents, when they speak to American and Israeli officials, they tell them one thing. And when they turn around and they speak to you and they speak to me, they tell us almost the opposite thing. say to all of this, we say that a good part of the responsibility for this continuing lies on the shoulders of those who speak from Islamic positions, who are making it possible for double talk to take its effect in our lives for some of us to entertain false hopes. We've been living this, especially since Al Imam Al Khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi, passed away. All of a sudden, there's been a sweeping wave of false hopes. Because people, they want to reach an accommodation, an understanding a type of dialogue with Allah's enemies. This cannot happen. And if there are some people who are in those positions, who want to be promoted, or who want to look in good in front of their superiors, or who have a scheme of undermining the original pulse of the Islamic Revolution. This pulse is not going to go away. They will only expose themselves. Because if one part of the Muslims feels tired, the other part will fill in. And this affair will continue until Allah Azza wa Jal interferes in His own way, at His own time, with His own method, to see to it that His promise and His pledge actualize. For those who cannot keep up with this, don't place yourself in the way If you can't carry your burden, don't place your burden on others. Step aside and let those who are sincere to Allah do what has to be done. And in this way you will expedite the eventual materialization of the future. اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين 
ربنا صل على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم ربنا بارك على محمد وآل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر ومن أظلم ممن منع مساجد الله أن يذكر فيها اسمه وسعى في خرابها أولئك ما كان لهم أن يدخلوها إلا خائفين لهم في الدنيا خزي ولهم في الآخرة عذاب عظيم إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعم يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة أكبر الله أكبر أشهد لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله هي رسول الله هي للفلا قد قامت سلا قد قامت سلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله اللهم رب هذه دعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آتي سيدنا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة العالية رفيعة وعث اللهم مقاما محمودا والحوض المورود كما وعدته Straight lines please shoulder to shoulder and heart with heart صلوا صلاة مودع الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نسأل تعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال على حبه ذوي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والموفون بعهدهم إذا عاهدوا والصابرين في البأس 
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi This uh, week we're going 
going to turn our clocks ahead one hour. So that means next Friday, instead of the Jumu'ah beginning around one, it will begin, inshallah, around two. This was only a reminder. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا إله إلا الله إلها واحدا ونحن له مسلمون لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره المشركون لا إله إلا الله ربنا ورب آبائنا الأولين لا إله إلا الله وحده 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 أنجز وعده ونصر عبده وعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده فله الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت ويميت ويحيي وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير